Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. I am Siddharth Hazra and today we would be discussing sum of all divisors from 1 to n. Let's talk about the feedback of this problem. This problem is kind of observation based problem or I can say that this problems are simulation based problems with hint of simple mathematics. Let's talk about the problems. So the problem statement is not really necessary because the problem name is self explanatory itself. So it is sum of all the devices from one to one. What do I really mean is let's say we have the value as four. Okay. So for one, the divisors are one for the number two, the divisors are one and two for the number three, the divisors are one, not two because two can't really divide three, one and three. For the number four, the divisors are one, two and four. Let's talk about the sum of this from every as like one plus one only one, one plus two, three, one plus three, four, four plus two, seven, and then three plus one, four, four plus four, eight, eight plus seven is equals to something as 15. This is how the value of 15 is coming up. So we, I don't really think more test cases are necessary because this test case is sufficient enough. So the question is, can we do it in brute force? Okay. So first the observation would be, can we do it in brute force or not? This is, the, this is like, you would ask me like, so that how really you do find out that how, when to brute, do the brute force, when not to do the brute force, because you, if you are solving up this problem, it can be the case that you are a beginner. So I would tell you the scenario. Like what is the general algorithm I have in my mind to find the divisor? The general algorithm to find the divisor of 20 is that I would start in my mind from 1. Can 1 divide 20? If it can, I would write 1. Can 2 divide 20? If it can, I would write 2. Can 3 divide 20? No, it can't. So I would skip 2. Can 4 divide 20? Yes, it can. So I would write it. So in my mind, I would iterate from 1 to 20 because a number greater than the number itself can't really divide it. Like 21, 22 can't really divide 20. So I would go from the value 1 till the value that is given and all the values which are able to divide the number. That is when the remainder is 0, I would say yes, that is a divisor. So if the value is even though if this expected time complexity is not given. If the value is given n, so I would for 1, I would go from 1 to 1. For 2, I would go from 2 to 2. For 3, I would go from 1 to 3. This would be 1 to 2. For 4, I would be going from 1 to 4 and I would be going till the value of n. So for each number, I am doing n operations in general, I can say. So for one number, I am doing n operations. I can say that roughly. So if the value is 5, then I would do the processing for 5 numbers. And for each number, I am doing n operations. So for one number, I am doing n operations. So calculate a value of n, I would do n, n square operation. So n square operation, what is the maximum value that is there of n? That is 10 to the power 6. 10 to the power 6 square is equals to 10 to the power 8. 10 to the power 12. So 10 to the power 12 is greater than 10 to the power 8. So we would get a time limit exceeded. Because in one second in online compiler, we can perform on 10 to the power 8 operations. So this is how I come to the conclusion that when an optimized version is needed, when it is not needed even though this expected time complexity is given or it is not given. So this is how we get the expected time complexity. Okay. So let's move forward to this. So let's just see what was here at this point. Like we really want the sum. So we can use a contribution technique. 
okay like this is technique is known as contribution technique if you are kind of very drilled inside competitive programming then you would know else this is a very simple thing like you would see what is the contribution of each of the number in the answer because we don't really need the values individually like we don't really need the divisors individually we just need the contribution as a sum so now let us see one can contribute to which all as a divisor one can contribute to everyone as a divisor two can contribute to all the even numbers in the divisor three can contribute to three six nine twelve so now let us see for more than value so for one the value would be one so for two the value would be one and two for three the value would be one and three so for 4, the value would be 1, 2 and 4. So for 5, the value should be 1 and 5. So for 6, the value should be 1, 2, 3 and 6. For 7, the value would be 1 and 7. For 8, the value would be 1, 2, 3, 4 and we can't really move forward now it is sufficient enough so now we want the contribution so we would be marking up all the numbers that we are getting so one would be contributing in everyone so if the given value is 8 so we would simply say 8 divided by 1 multiplied by 1 and the sum contributed by 1 as a divisor would be 8 yes it is true for 2 we have 2, 2 here and 2 here and 2 here. So 2 would contribute to how many values? To all the even values. So we can say that 8 divided by 2 would tell me the number of times 2 would be present as a divisor. And then just multiply it by 2 because the contribution is 2 of each one. So that would be nothing but 2, 2 that would be 8 again. And yes, 2 to 4, 4 plus 2, 6, 6 plus 2, 8. So now you are getting the idea. Now, 3 as a divisor. So 8 divided by 3, multiplied by 3. 8 divided by 3 is 2 point something. But we would take the integer value. Why? Because if you just see 8 would be present at 3, 8 would be present at 6. So we are just taking that. So that would be 2 multiplied by 3, that is equals to 6. So yes, 3 plus 3, 6. So this is how we would move forward to something known as 4 also. So that would multiplied by 4, that would be 2 multiplied by 4, that is 8. And yes, 4 is present 2 times. Then we would be going to 8 by 5, multiplied by 5, that is again 5, because 5 is present once, then 6, then 7, and then 8 itself. Here 8 would also be present. So what we can really do is, if we just add up all these values, we would get the sum of all these values. So see how instead of getting the individual values, we found out the contribution. Okay, like we really, really want the number of contribution multiplied by the divisor. We want this. This is what we are doing. So you just need to narrow down your thinking. If we just see the sample test case, you would kind of think, okay, I need to individually find all the divisor for all the numbers. But you don't really need to do the hard work. You can just see, okay, one is coming eight times, I would take it. If two is coming n by two number of times, I would take it. Same goes for all the individual numbers. This is how you would do it. Let's move to the implementation and that would solve the purpose. Here we would have the value as n. So now the answer is so expecting a long long so we know the sum would be huge so we are saving that in long long now we would start iterating from 1 for int i is equals to 1 we would go till the value of n and we would do i plus plus at each point what we would do is sum plus equals to num the total value n divided by i and then multiply it with the value i so this is already an integer division, integer division multiplied by i. So we don't really like 8 divided by 3 was 2.66, but it is already an integer division. So we would get a 2 and we would multiply it, add it, return the result and that is sufficient. So now the time complexity is big of n.
that's it. So, I don't think much talking about time complexity and space complexity is needed. Only variables are used. So, space complexity is big of 1 and time complexity is big of 1. That's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.